Good morning, everyone. Happy Friday and welcome to a special edition of Talent Thursday. Uh, very excited for the conversation that we're going to bring you this morning. Uh, the, the life and the schedule of a registered nurse can be complicated. And in this case, Friday morning worked for our guests and we wanted to uh, make it work as well because she has a fantastic story and we are excited to share it with you. Uh, with that, I will bring in Chelsea Breck. She's a registered nurse at Stanford Health. Uh, good morning, Chelsea. Thanks so much for being with us. Good morning. Thank you for having me. And as always, uh, my partner in these uh, live talks, Denise Gazetta at the Sioux Falls Development Foundation, who I know was so excited to connect us with Chelsea. And uh, why is that, Denise? Oh, absolutely, because Chelsea is credited with saving the life of one of my very, very most favorite people here in Sioux Falls. So thank you, Chelsea. You know, I mean, when I think about my own uh, career, my own job, and maybe Denise, you do too, the things that I think are a big deal in my day, um, the challenges that I might think are created in uh, my work life are nothing compared to what many of you in healthcare experience every day. So uh, Chelsea, thanks for what you do. When I talk to healthcare professionals, it reminds me of what's really important in life. And in this case, there's, there's just nothing more important, obviously, than saving a life. Um, those are, are some really powerful times, I am sure, in, uh, in your career journey. So um, with that, I'm gonna start with the journey. Um, can you tell us a little bit about uh, yourself and your background and how you got where you are? Yeah, um, I am originally from Harrisburg. I went to Harrisburg kindergarten through high school. I ended up going to USD. I actually started um, a major in elementary education. And it was when I was working at the nursing home, the middle of my third year of college, that I was like, I don't really care for my classes. I was not enjoying the elementary education classes. And I was working at the nursing home at that time. So there was just something that was kind of telling me that I feel like I'm supposed to be a nurse. I'm supposed to be in healthcare. I'm supposed to take care of people like that instead of educating children. And so then at that time in the middle of my third year, which seems a little late to make the decision, but um, I switched to nursing and did my prerequisites and ended up getting into the USD nursing program. Um, it was a tough decision given how far I was in my education, um, but it was one of the best decisions I've made um, for myself. Um, it's what I feel like I was truly called to be. I remember playing nurse when I was little. Um, and just taking care of people and investing in people in that aspect was just so rewarding. It's a um, reward that I can't really even explain. Um, at the time, the people in the nursing home didn't remember me, but I knew that I was making a difference in their lives um, when they didn't have family there. Um, we were there to help them. And yeah. there's just something about that that really um, was rewarding. And so then from there, um, I went to Stanford in Sioux Falls and worked on the cardiology floor. Um, and I was an aide during nursing school. And that kind of helped me develop the skills and people skills that I needed to eventually be a nurse in that position um, on that floor. And so then I ended up becoming a nurse on, on the cardiology floor. And a couple of years into that, I was actually asked to come work in the cardiology clinic. And now I've been here for almost four years. Um, it's, it's a great job. Both, both jobs are, were wonderful. I actually still work on the floor as needed. Um, and so I get that patient care as well as that clinical side, um, which is really nice because I'm able to specialize in cardiology in the clinic, but I'm still able to use my skills and those types of things on the floor. So, so about six years out of school, if I'm doing the math right. Yeah. Okay. Yep, a little. That's correct. Okay. You know, the one thing, well, a lot of things stood out, but one thing right away did to me, Denise, and that is the fact that Chelsea was working during college. And, Absolutely. you know, sometimes we don't see that all the time now. Um, it, it can really vary. And yet, you can't underestimate the value of that actual work experience because here it led you to a completely different career path. 
So I absolutely, I, I chimed in just on that piece. And the other piece that she shared is when she was younger, she liked to take care of people. And so she felt a draw. So, you know, this is one of the reasons why we are sharing the stories of Chelsea and others in our community, because we are really lifting up those people that are in that skilled and technical area. We call them anywhere from nurses, they could be doctors, they could be engineers, but we see early signs in their childhood that they like to do different types of work. And so how do we then coalesce all of that and really encourage that, especially in the area of nursing where we have such a great need, not only here in Sioux Falls, but also nationally. So it's just a pleasure to hear sort of Chelsea's story and also to have her part of our talent draft day, which really is talking about how can you connect the needs of students like Chelsea that are out there that have the desire to have an internship? Maybe it's going to be that exploration that they need. You know, Chelsea was a education major. I've heard a lot of people in education then go into different pathways. So how can we have that sort of facilitation of that type of exchange so that when they do go out in the workforce, they end up with a Sanford or a Vera or a Journey but they get into really a community and also a family oriented company that really invest in them. And that's what's mm -hmm. powerful. So. The other thing I smiled about was when you said, well, I was a little late to this because I started off right. with one thing. No, it's okay. I mean, whether you're in college um, or even if you're already out into the workplace, I would say too, what Chelsea said kind of resonates in that, you know, I just didn't really like what I was doing. I didn't like the, the role that I was going toward and it didn't feel like the right fit. I mean, we still in this community have so many pathways where you can change, you know, and, and COVID I think has reinforced some of this too with people to, to really make them take stock of things and assess, am I in the role that is most fulfilling to me that is, is taking best advantage of what I am maybe wired to be? And yes, it's going to be more challenging if you're a bit non-traditional, but Denise, we see this, don't we? Of people changing careers, um, maybe they go to undergrad for one thing and they switch gears and they do some technical training or some graduate training, those pathways absolutely exist here. They, they absolutely do. And, and they're so varied. I mean, in the terms of, and I know we're talking from, you know, the, the point of Sanford and nursing, but think about Sanford and all the opportunities they have there outside of nursing, outside of care, right? That puts really that infrastructure together that supports all of the things that somebody like Chelsea does on a day-to-day -day basis and save some of our very most favorite people in the world, right? At the same right. time. So, you know, this is, we talk about the career paths here. We talk about that we have very high labor participation rate, which means we are in a very strong economy. Um, the news that we want to, or the one piece that we want to communicate with all of these things, Judy, is really, we have so many wonderful opportunities for anybody that's in college, or maybe you're outside of college and you're looking for a change. We have employers that are still offering the internships, the apprenticeships, as well as the jobs. So it is a pleasure to really mm -hmm. connect. Chelsea, if you were to talk to college students today that are maybe, maybe they're all in on nursing, right? Maybe they've always known that's what they want to do. Or maybe they're like you or they're a year or two into school and they're kind of thinking maybe they're not in the right spot and they're, they're interested in nursing. Do you have any thoughts or any advice on, on what you might want to share with them? Um, exposure. Um, as far as being exposed to the thing that you are contemplating about, the things that you are unsure about, um, shadowing, um, whatever you can do to really get in there and get your hands on to see if that's something that you like. Like I said, I don't know that I would have changed career paths um, because of how far I was in my, my education already. I don't know that I would have changed career paths into something that I found I loved if it wasn't for my job that I had where I was exposed to healthcare and taking care of people. It just, I found my passion by experiencing my passion. Do you feel like people who are really wired to be in nursing kind of feel that right away when they're immersed in that environment? It, either it's for you or it's not, or do you recommend maybe trying different areas of nursing? Because I feel like the experience could vary dramatically depending on, on where you sit. I would agree. Um, with that, um, that it does vary because there might be one, one area that does interest you or, you know, that makes you realize, oh, this is the kind of nursing or healthcare I want to be in. I know when I was an aide and was floated to a different floor, 
I didn't enjoy that floor as much as the floor that I worked on, not because of the people, but because of the patient population. And so that kind of geared me towards what kind of nurse I wanted to be as well. Um, I think initially it's hard to make that decision because um, you, it's all new. You're nervous. There's all, all of those types of things. So I think once you get past the nervousness and all of the, the newness, you can really decide, um, do you like it because you actually like it or do you not like it because you actually don't like it? Um, you know, that fear, sometimes that nervousness initially can kind of set you back. But I think that actually investing into that and um, getting past that newness and deciding, is this where I want to be? Is this the type of thing I want to do? I think that you have to sometimes give it a little bit of time. What is the lifestyle like for a nurse? I mean, I, I don't know that you have a typical day. Um, you know, what is your, I, it's an overused cliche, but what does your work-life balance look like? Sure. So I can kind of speak to both um, clinical nursing and floor nursing as I've done both. Um, floor nursing, typically it's three days a week. Um, you have your weekends in there. Um, it's been a while since I've actually done just floor nursing, so I don't remember what I did. I was going back to school to get my bachelor's at the time while I was working full-time as a new nurse as well. Um, so I spent a lot of time advancing my career, essentially, in my degree. Um, and now, as a clinic nurse, um, I do work four days a week, Monday through Friday. Um, I do have a day off. It kind of varies Monday, Wednesday, Friday, whatever works best for our physician schedule. I work for one um, provider in the clinic here, um, but I'm able to help others. Um, and so I typically start my day at seven and I'm typically off by five. We do have outreach days where we do travel for work. And so those are a little bit longer days, but it's nice to get out and kind of have a change of scenery as well. Um, and then my weekends, I don't, I don't have to work. Um, I don't work holidays. I don't work nights. So work-life balance with this job is great. Um, they're very flexible as far as if we would need something off, if there's something going on that we would need an extended period of time off, they are willing to work with us, which is great. It's the sense of family. It's a sense of um, commitment to each other as well. I mean, if somebody else needs some time off, then we're able to help that person too. Uh, but I, it's the job that I'm in now um, really does give me um, that work-life balance where I have my evenings to do the things that I need to do. I work more days, but it doesn't feel like more days um, because I do have my, my evenings and my weekends and things like that off, so. You know, my sense is that even though Sanford is a really big organization, that wherever you work, it seems like it's a pretty tight-knit group. So I'm guessing it doesn't maybe feel like such a big organization. Absolutely. Um, I remember being on the floor and thinking that, you know, these people are like my second family. I spend three days a week with them, sometimes different people, sometimes new people, but you get to know them. Um, and then in the clinic, um, we really are very close-knit. Um, we are a family because we work together all of the time with that one group, so. And yet, I mean, I don't know where your head goes as far as what's next, but because it is such a big organization, I know there are a lot of opportunities um, for nurses to try different things and to advance professionally. Um, do you know what that could look like for you? Is there anything that, that interests you as you sort of look a little bit more broadly at that? You know, I have. Um, considered and at one point I made it my 10 year goal to become a nurse practitioner. Um, they do really encourage um, career advancement um, into doing that. They support you, they, they help you um, as far as giving you what you need to succeed in advancing your career. Um, at this time, I'm unsure that that's something I would want to go back for just because I am very happy with the position I am in. So I'm not sure that I would necessarily want to give up what I have, um, but it that opportunity is there and that's what's most important. Right, knowing you could do it if it seemed like the right thing at the right time. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's, it's so key here with what she's saying because, and I really want all of our readers to, to know 
Sanford's very open, as if all of our employers are, to helping people on their journey. So that's the investment when it comes when you have a good company culture and you're open with your employees, right? And you're invested in them. So as a retention strategy, we see a lot of companies adopting and, and moving towards this, this flexibility and this continued investment. Because it's a lot easier, okay, when you have somebody, a member of your family, to keep them as a member of your family. Um, but just know there's great opportunities too. And so Chelsea is experiencing all of that. And whether you go on to become a nurse practitioner or you stay in your current role, there's still so much that's that investment in having that flexibility that is so incredibly, very, very important in today's society. It's interesting because I feel like we have so many students who do go into nursing programs. We have a number of um, colleges and universities that offer those degrees right here around Sioux Falls and in the region. And yet, when I ask, what do we need more of? Inevitably, I hear we need more nurses. nurses. We need more um, medical professionals at different levels. And um, Denise, you've been in a great position to see, though, where you can go with this education and training because um, Chelsea's happy where she is at. And yet you and I, we've talked to so many people who came up through nursing and have taken all of these different career paths, even in some cases into tech companies and things like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah it, it's so incredible because so one of the things that also Chelsea just shared with us is that she had this experience as she was coming through and she was employed and she was working on becoming and getting her bachelor's. We see a lot of that. So we see a lot of people that start as certified nursing assistants, okay? And then they have that support of their employer. And then once they get that support, they continue to invest in where they wanna go, whether it's in technology. So Jody and I just interviewed a couple uh, people that work for, they're in the skilled care profession, but they're providing those technology solutions so they can better serve the people, the practitioners out in the field like Chelsea, or they go into uh, nursing practitioner roles or even physician assistant roles. Um, those are wonderful opportunities, but it's that whole area of skilled healthcare because one of the things that's happening with us and especially where Chelsea is with skilled healthcare in certain types of uh, critical areas like cardiology, is people are getting older, they're living longer, they need more care, right? So that's where you point to a system like Sanford or Avera, but you point to these hospital systems that have this dedicated staff and this continual investment in their employees that really makes the difference there, so. Mm -hmm. um, Chelsea, I wanna talk a little bit about um, living in Sioux Falls and the Sioux Falls area. You mentioned you're from Harrisburg originally. It's been amazing for me to see what's happening in Harrisburg. So. Um, do you still live there? Do you live in Sioux Falls? What does that look like for you? And, and what keeps you here from a lifestyle perspective? Yeah, I do um, currently um, live in Sioux Falls. Um, Sioux Falls has obviously grown just like the surrounding areas, um, but I see so much development in Sioux Falls. I was actually just talking to um, someone recently where I was like, you know, I really want to get more involved in the things that are going on around here because there are so many things that you, you sometimes just don't realize what is all going on. Obviously with COVID, things are a little different than they normally would be, but um, there's so much opportunity as far as just getting involved in events, um, social events, um, I know that there are a lot of things that go on that I don't even know about, um, but I see them on Facebook and whatnot. Um, and downtown Sioux Falls has obviously, um, changed significantly for the better as well. There's a lot of things to look at and do downtown that people aren't aware of either. What do you like to do in your off time? Um, I actually really like to do projects. Um, I like to do house projects. I own my house, so I kind of like to fix things up. Um, I, of course, like to spend time with family and friends, as cliche as that is, but um, I'm a people person. Um, and that's, I mean, that's not all, but that's kind of the gist of what I've been doing recently, just because of yeah. things I've been we're going big, on. We're big DIYers around here anyway, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but it's funny because, okay, we've said, we've established that you're six years out of school. 
and you're a homeowner already. Mm -hmm. And this is just continuing. Denise and I have talked to so many people in your age range who own their homes. And, you know, students, if you're watching this and thinking about, do I move to Sioux Falls or do I maybe go to a bigger city? You know, if you think it'd be pretty cool to be a homeowner before you're 30, I would say you can do that in Sioux Falls. I don't know that you can necessarily do that in other places. People I went to college with, um, in some cases, well into their 30s before they were able to buy their first house. Um, I was 27. You know, you're, you were obviously in your 20s. Um, and Denise, I do think that's a differentiator, don't you? Oh, absolutely. I think about, you know, my own experience growing up in the Washington, D.C. area and living, you know, 17 miles outside of Washington, but the two hour commute into the city, whereas Chelsea, I don't know what your commute is. You probably maybe spent two hours going up and back to Minnesota yesterday to provide, you know, care, right? So these are all the things when you talk about the quality of life, you then look at all the opportunities to get involved in our community. Um, we have so many wonderful ways to support our schools and, and our elderly and really just immerse ourselves. We have great restaurants and great other things that, that are included in that, but it is so very different than what I had experienced when I was growing up and in my 20s. I was a homeowner, but I lived way outside of the Washington DC area. And even when I went to Minneapolis, I lived way outside of the Minneapolis area and had a long commute. So I'm sure that helps Chelsea to have a shorter commute, right? Yeah, absolutely. Actually, my commute is, quite literally just minutes. So it's pretty, <laughs> yeah. Um, homeowning is something that's very doable. For me, it just made, it made sense. Um, it made sense for me to own a home. I knew I wasn't gonna go anywhere anytime soon. And if I was, then I knew that selling my house wouldn't be an impossible thing to do. Um, so like I said, for me at that point in my life, that's just what made more sense for me. And I'd say too, if you are in your 20s and you just think, oh no, I, I can't, it's too much maintenance. I'm not a DIYer, I don't wanna deal with it. We have amazing apartment options in Sioux Falls too. If you want that downtown living, I mean, just incredible amenities, um, whether you wanna be right near a bike path or you wanna be near the river or you wanna be right in the heart of downtown, like you are gonna be able to find that experience too um, on the apartment side. Denise, I don't want to leave out Talent Draft Day because this is all leading up to Talent Draft Day and it's coming up soon. We're weeks away. So what do people need to know about that? So Talent Draft Day 2020 is on October 8th. We are celebrating people like Chelsea that we very much need in our community. And they fall into the skilled and the technical areas um, of trades and professions. So anybody from a nurse to an a engineer to an electrician, a welder, a plumber, you know, we have such great need in our community for these critical at mass jobs. So to learn more information about it, just log on to win.siouxfallsdevelopment.com for more information. We are sponsoring this event, so there is no cost to attend. You may attend virtually. We are going to be live streaming on Facebook and Instagram and YouTube uh, just to make sure that we share in our community um, all the wonderful opportunities for for more people like Chelsea to join us. Although yeah. Chelsea just went literally like five miles because Harrisburg is not that far. And I actually <laughs> live on the border between Sioux Falls and Harrisburg. So I'm pretty fond of Harrisburg myself. Yeah, me too. And, and that's the other thing. If you like that little smaller town feel, uh, we still have lots of options for that within a very quick drive to Sioux Falls. So we, we truly are at a point right now in our growth as a city where we can offer that urban downtown feel. We can offer that small town feel. We can offer that suburb and neighborhood feel. Um, whatever feels like the best fit for you, you're going to be able to find it here. Um, Chelsea, any closing thoughts um, or, or advice for others here as, as we wrap it up or, or looking back, things that really helped make the difference in terms of uh, your career and, and got you to where you were at today? Um, I would say, honestly, just experiencing what you're interested in. Um, really, like I said before, exposing yourself to those things that you think you may be interested in um, to help if you're on unsure about what you want to do to really get involved and to, to determine that way by experience what you truly want to do. I think that's probably been the biggest life changer for me. For sure. Great thoughts. Denise, anything else? No, I just want to say thank you to both of you for this special edition. This is great. You know, we're going to try to do more of these because again, we're sharing the journeys 
here available to people in Sioux Falls. So thank you both today. You bet. Thanks for watching, Chelsea. Thanks for all you do uh, yourself and, and all of your coworkers uh, are, are true difference makers in our community. And, and we just yes. can't thank you enough for your work. So thanks for watching, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your day. Have a great weekend. We'll be back with you next week with another edition of Talent Thursday. Thanks for watching. Bye.